welcome to The Green Building Show, where we investigate green design and building trends throughout Australia. Hi, this week we wrap up our series on green renovation. I'll sit down with Jeff Perkins, he's a property valuer, who's going to explain how a green renovation can have an impact on the value of our home. And in Australian style, I'll speak with Don Cottrell. He's a director of a Queensland builder, Sanctuary 28, and they've turned a dark and dingy workers' cottage into a light-filled, modern and sustainable home. Well, I'm here today with Jeff Perkins. He's the owner of AAA Property Valuations. Thanks for being with us, Jeff. That's fine. Welcome so to be here. Yeah, great. So we're here talking about, we're talking about green renovation. The reason we want to speak with a property valuer is to get an idea of the financial impact that green renovations can potentially have on a home. So I mean, in your experience, do you think that um, a green renovation or a green innovation, as they say, can actually um, have some sort of uh, financial impact on increasing the value of a home? Well, there's a few answers to that question. The, um it will depend on a number of factors. It will depend on the, on the demographics, of the, the type of person that would be potentially buying it. Uh, a younger purchaser, say four, less than 40, are more tuned into the sustainability type issues and they'd be tend to look for those features. Um, older, in, older buyers and or investors, probably lesser so and possibly not at all. Uh, they'll be looking more for location and, and the style of house, etc. Okay, but isn't there some sort of, uh, isn't there in financial incentives for people to, to choose a, a more sustainable home for a, for a home, um, potential home buyer looking for a more sustainable home in terms of say energy costs, you know, in a, in a well thermal rated house, the energy costs will be cheaper. Does that not play um, an impact in, in the way people choose to buy a home? Yes, it certainly wouldn't be a negative, but how much of a positive, I guess, is what you're getting at and whether you can put a dollar value on that positive factor. A um, little bit subjective. Uh, again, it sort of comes back to the type of buyer and it certainly it's not, it wouldn't be a negative feature. You'd probably make you sell your home a little bit faster and not only demographics, but probably geographics. Certain areas like inner suburbs would tend to have a demographic that would favour that type of um, sustainability features that are, that are built into a property. Mm -hmm. Okay, fantastic. And all, most new homes in Australia nowadays, they've all got some sort of sustainability, um, sustainability aspect played into them, whether it's you know, having, having a special uh, a thermal rating of some sort. Do, is that going to start playing more of an impact in older homes in Australia, do you think, as, as consumers become more aware, aware of the, you know, the sustainable um, benefits in Australia? Yes, uh, I would imagine anyone doing a renovation, um, particularly if they're a home owner, would like to have obviously a cooler home in summer and a warmer home in winter. Um, and when you're designing a house too, you'd need to take into account other factors like the aspect and you know, skylights, available light, that type of that type of thing. Um, so, pe so people who don't um, take those things into account when they do their renovation, could this possibly be actually costing them money? It, it could do, but again, if, say for example, a, an investor purchases the property, the, ben the beneficiary will be the tenant and the investor may not be particularly interested in saving the tenant's electricity costs, for example, or their water usage. Um, for, for an owner-occupier, and a, a, that particularly as energy prices are increasing, and it's well publicised that they are, they would tend to uh, favour a house that, that you could establish if you could have some sort of uh, special rating that you could give the person to say that this, this house is more energy efficient. Of course, that's going to be a positive. How much in dollar terms, again, is somewhat subjective. Mm -hmm. It depends on the, on the buyer, of course. Are you, are, is consumer awareness um, in terms of sustainability, is that, is that increasing in your, in your opinion? when it comes to selling, selling and buying homes? It, it is increasing, but um, I guess it gets back to the old factor of location, location, location. Um, if you're in a, a beachside suburb as opposed to a totally sustainable house somewhere in Timbuktu, obviously the, 
price relates to location, to the style of the house, to whether it suits the requirements, whether it's close to the facilities that people want. Um, I think in the pecking order, sustainability comes further down mm -hmm. as people get a little bit more aware of it and as younger people uh, more that are more sustainably aware come into the market, that may come further up the pecking order. Okay. And what advice would you give to someone who wants to do a renovation and, and increase the value of their home? What do you think um, that renovation would be? Well, there would be certain things, as I mentioned before, like uh, the aspect is important, uh, whether there's natural light, whether it takes into account views, uh, whether you can see a glimpse of water, the old water views, which is normally just a glimpse out the bathroom window, things like that. Um, so orientation and passive solar design would play, would be um, a significant factor in increasing the value of a home? Yes, unless, unless, a, unless a buyer can actually see it and touch it and feel it and get a warm feeling from it, if you pardon the pun, um, it doesn't necessarily translate into a price. If it's buried in the wall somewhere, unless it's pointed out to them and they'll just sort of shrug their shoulders, they won't know if it's there or not. Okay. So you'd need to establish the fact that it was there and that's where if you had some sort of a, a document that show, that could show that this, this work was actually done, it was to a certain standard, it's certainly going to be a positive. Okay. But so how, much of a, how much of a positive would... All right, well, as a property, as a property value, or sorry, if you came, went to value a home and, they, and the homeowner actually had a piece of paper from an energy assessor saying this is a, a 10 star rated thermal home, how much weight would that have in, in assessing the, the value of the property? It wouldn't necessarily translate into a dollar figure. It may translate into the fact that a certain demographic would, uh, might be something that tips them over the edge to buy or it may sell quicker. Yep. Okay, so speed of sale is, is um, a more likely outcome rather than actually dollar to figure increase. Yes, and um, as I mentioned before, if it's an investor buying the property as opposed to a, someone who's going to live there, um, the investor would not be terribly concerned and perhaps the older generation would, would, wouldn't necessarily be as concerned. All right. And what about solar panels? If, you, if a home has solar panels, does that increase value of a home significantly? Again, if it's an owner-occupier, it would certainly be a plus, um, just as long as the person wasn't concerned for maintenance and upkeep of it. And I guess you'd have to consider the lifespan of the, of the solar panel. Mm -hmm. Um, whether they tended, you know, if they not sort of become deteriorated and rusted and what have you, and or, or half hanging off the the, the roof, that type of thing. Yeah. Particularly as energy prices are increasing, people would be more concerned the fact they're going to save electricity. But again, that would be more a uh, a person who does consume a lot of electricity, I guess, and someone that's going to be an owner occupier. Mm -hmm. A landlord isn't necessarily concerned with the tenant's electricity bill, whether that's right or wrong. It's another issue, but yep. they tend to say, well, that's the tenant's problem. Jeff Perkins, thank you for your time. Okay, you're welcome. So, Victoria, I hear green roofs are hot this week. Well, actually, there's a bit of a change going on in green roofs. I think, according to this, um, a great article in this week's Sanctuary, um, we all are familiar with the concept of green roofs from Europe. In fact, um, Berlin actually has 30% of its rooftops uh, have to be green, are green roofs. Um, and also we're familiar with them with large high-rise residential buildings investing in them. But it's certainly not something you see in the average Aussie home. Um, but something this article was talking about was the rise of normal, normal standard Australian homes introducing a green roof. And when I say a green roof, it's literally a roof that is growing. So it's on top of a waterproof layer, you're literally planting the soil and planting the grass. So that was really interesting. Um, there's a, an association, it is the Green Roofs Australia Association has begun. Um, but also what I found really interesting was the concept that it's, um, it's brilliant for keeping houses cool. Um, because the soil acts as um, a thermal buffer and the plants evaporate heat, it's basically like a huge shady umbrella and in fact CSIRO has found that green roofs reduce the amount of heat used to cool a home by 
So I just thought they were two really interesting issues and it'd be great to see more normal homes using green roofs. I'm here today with Don Cottrell. He's the director of Queensland Builder Sanctuary 28. Thanks for being with us, Don. No problem, Carlos. Thanks for having me. Yeah, pleasure. So we're here talking about your renovated... You've renovated a workers' cottage in Queensland's Palm Beach. And I guess in the, in the, in the small description that I've read, it says that you've... That basically you've brought, you know, a, a dark and, and somewhat dingy home. Um, you've, you know, you've created a, a light-filled and, and lightweight home. Um, just tell us, tell us some of the challenges um, about bringing this home into the, into the modern age, Don. I, I guess when they built these houses back in the 1950s and 60s, there wasn't a real focus on which direction was north or, um, you know, how sort of... Uh, how uh, they could design them to, to suit the climate. Um, it certainly wasn't the classic old Queenslander. It was it was an established it was an asbestos um, sort of workers' cottage that was there. So asbestos roof, walls, and all the internal lining. So we had that challenge to deal with. And obviously, with the uh, you know not many windows on the northern side, um, they they sort of concentrate more on the direction of the street, really, which is which is something that we don't look at these days. So the opportunity was there um, uh, to. to to extend the house back along it was a long narrow skinny block uh, and the long side of the block faced to the north so we had an opportunity to capture a lot of northern light great and, and it also says in the description that i've read don that you know parts of the house were you know the, from the original dwelling were quite dark and quite cramped and and and, and they've now been um, transformed into functional spaces with with a perfect balance of of light can you just explain how you achieved this yeah, it's, it's hard to believe that um, these days when you would look at a house, this house was 6 metres wide by 11 metres long, 66 square metres. You know, some of our lounge rooms are, are, are that big these days. Um, and that house had, um, uh, you know, in the living area, it had a you know a living, dining, kitchen area, all in just a very small area. Um, it was a weekender for a, uh, for a Brisbane family. It used to come down the Gold Coast and holiday down, down there. So um, to to change it, we we didn't move too many of the existing walls in the in in the in the cottage. Uh, when we extended onto the back, is when we added in a, a new kitchen, a laundry, main bedroom, walk-in robe, and ensuite. Uh, but what we did do is change all of the windows over, and uh, we we utilised the aspect, and we we got more windows on the northern side and large bits of glass allowing the light to come in. Um, so the bedrooms still remained um, on the southern side of the house, which which wasn't an issue. If you're designing a house, that's probably the best place to put your bedrooms is on the southern side, uh, the bedrooms being darker and cooler. Um, so that worked for us. And, um, yeah, we just uh, transformed the kitchen area that was previously there in the laundry area, opened that up into one living room in the old house, and then uh, went on with the new kitchen and uh, laundry main bedroom. Don Cottrell, thank you for your time. Thank you. This week... We've got a question from Rosie. She's looking to build a weatherboard style home in Sydney, but she's having difficulty finding the right builder who specialises in this type of construction. Well, Rosie, your question is certainly well timed, and I recommend checking out the last episode of The Green Building Show. In the Australian style segment, I speak with Melissa Lucille, the co owner of a Sydney builder, GJ Gardner Homes and they've just released a new range of weatherboard designs which they say is taking Sydney's northern beaches by storm.